So let's get started. Uh, good morning. Welcome to one more session of uh, introduction to photonics. So what we want to do uh, during this week is uh, identify the fundamental principles of uh, lasers and uh, quantify their uh, uh, performance characteristics. So uh, that's that's what we want to get to, and and we do understand that uh, a laser is essentially an amplifier with feedback. So we've been spending a lot of time uh, trying to understand amplifiers, understand the process of amplification, and uh, we have some unfinished business from that perspective. So in the last lecture, we were trying to address a problem related to the design of an erbium dope fiber amplifier. So uh, we said erbium dope fiber amplifier construction is typically like this, where uh, you excite the erbium dope fiber from one of the ends of the fiber because uh, uh, this lateral excitation is not, uh, uh, is not practical. And uh, when we do that, we started uh, looking at how the pump power is getting absorbed along the length of the fiber and also how the signal power evolves along the length of the fiber. And we needed to quantify how the signal power evolves. So uh, in order to do that, we were uh, defining uh, the signal power along the length uh, as dps over dz, which was essentially uh, dependent on this uh, gain coefficient. Now this gain coefficient itself, one thing that we realized is it's n2 multiplied by sigma e as it's uh, mentioned over here, it's n2 multiplied by sigma e minus n1 multiplied by sigma a. Previously, we had uh, made a rough approximation saying sigma e is equal to sigma a, right? But uh, if you actually write it out, uh, the gain coefficient would, would depend on uh, uh, this, this uh, factor in the uh, square brackets and what that tells us is that it is not necessary that N2 is greater than N1. So we looked at specific conditions where if uh, sigma E is greater than sigma A, okay, then N2 need not be greater than N1 and conversely we said if sigma e is less than sigma a, you if you have sufficiently high n2 over n1, you can achieve gain, right? So um, so we were we ended at at the point where we were pointing out to uh, certain spectral regions where um, in the in the longer uh, parts of the spectrum. The, the longer wavelengths, we find that uh, sigma e is typically greater than sigma a and because of that for uh, very low levels of excitation, you have gain, right? Uh, whereas the, uh, the shorter wavelengths over here, We have the case where sigma a is greater than sigma e and it takes a, a, a high level of excitation. Uh, so we were plotting this as uh, you know uh, for different levels of excitation and we said we, it requires a fairly high level of excitation to get gain. Gain is defined by this line, so above that you have um, positive gain, which means amplification, and below that we have negative gain, which essentially means loss. 
right. So, so it just tells you that you have to look at the relative levels of sigma e and sigma a to and as well as the relative levels of n2 and n1 to determine uh, you know what what n2 versus n1 you need um, to achieve gain. The question is about the absorption coefficient which is uh, essentially um, you know uh, uh, the number density multiplied by the uh, transition cross section right. So, n1 sigma can be looked upon as the absorption coefficient yes. So, so this is uh, 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 you can just say it is basically the emission coefficient versus the absorption coefficient right. Um, but just to uh, you know visualize all of this or help the visualization I have actually drawn all the uh, energy levels. So, it is such that the ground state is to the right side of this uh, graph and as we go towards the left side you are increasing in energy right. So, uh, if you are going from 98 if you, if you are pumping with 980 nanometer uh, photons you are going to that higher energy level which corresponds to the leftmost uh, uh, features right. And then from there you are non radiatively relaxing to uh, this other energy level which we call as energy level 2 uh, which is not just a single energy level. Uh, I wanted to emphasize that that we it is actually a bunch of energy levels there. So, you could have transitions over a wide range of wavelengths ok. So, essentially you can get gain over a wide range of wavelengths. Okay. So, uh, and one important thing is uh, what is happening at uh, this point right. So, it says that irrespective of your pumping level or irrespective of the uh, fraction of ions at the excited state you cannot achieve gain at 980 nanometers. Why is that? Well, there are two aspects to it. One is that we have a very strong non radiative relaxation component, right. So, you are not actually achieving emission at 980 nanometers, right. And but even if you end up getting emission, it is essentially corresponding to a two level system. So, there is equal probability of having the LBM ions are the excited state and as well as the ground state. So, uh, unless you have a significant emission cross section right you cannot achieve gain and in this case the emission cross section uh, that is the first statement we made is very low because of the fact that uh, you know the non radiative process is actually a much uh, more likely process than emission back to the uh, ground level. You understand this? Okay. So, let us actually go back and uh, see if based on all this discussion whether we are able to uh, solve this problem. This is where we started in the last lecture. So, we are asked to consider the amplification of light at signal wavelength of 1550 nanometers. You are giving you are given the total doping concentration N A you are asked to assume uh, uniform excitation ok. So, that is actually uh, a key point over here. So, if you have uniform excitation what can you say? That the inversion is actually uniform across this entire length of the fiber or you can you can make an assumption like that. And because of that if we go back and look at this we can say that with under uniform excitation you can say that n n1 of z is just constant n2 of z is a constant so there is no length dependence on the on the inversion and uh, because of that that integral will just yield 
uh, value of L, right? So that that is what is uh, uniform excitation would uh, correspond to. And uh, you are also told that you can assume a pump signal overlap factor of 0.9 for the erbium silica fiber. So, what does that correspond to? So, I have drawn the cross section of the erbium silica fiber, okay. So, uh, we are looking from the side of the fiber and so we know um, that you have a core and a cladding and the core essentially consists of all these erbium ions which is actually like I said in the last lecture is triply ionized, so erbium 3 plus ions. But what can we say about our uh, light distribution especially the, the fundamental mode? When you talk about the signal fundamental mode, that mode is not completely confined in the core. Right? So, there is certain parts of it that is in the core or, or most of it is in the core, but there is a certain uh, fraction of that signal which is propagating in the cladding. So, what can we say about that as far as an amplification process is concerned? That part is not actually undergoing gain. Only the part that is going through the core is undergoing gain, right? And the other aspect is that you have a pump and a signal and your gain would depend on what is the overlap of the pump and the signal. Why? Because if your pump is like this, right, which has got a uh, peak, uh, you know corresponding to the center of the core region and uh, over the periphery the amount of pump intensity available is lower then the inversion is lower in, in those areas. The inversion is very high in the central area, the inversion is very low at, at the other, other side. So, your gain once again actually depends on what is the pump profile or specifically what is the overlap of the pump with the signal, right? So, we are taking care of all of this through this pump signal overlap factor which we will denote as capital gamma and this overlap factor is such that when we are defining gain, if we go back and look at this, when we are defining gain over here or when we are defining the power itself, you have to multiply that gain coefficient by that pump signal overlap factor, right? That overlap factor is a number between 0 and 1, typically on the higher side because your signal, you know, if you have designed your fiber correct, your signal will have a fairly good overlap with, uh, with your uh, fiber and, and uh, the pump will also uh, will you design the fiber such that the pump has a significant overlap with the signal as well, okay? <coughs> so, you, you have to multiply that gain coefficient by that factor. So, if you go back and look at all of these things, all of these things should have that uh, factor uh, capital gamma in that which corresponds to the pump signal overlap. So, the question is whether gamma will be constant throughout the fiber, yes, you can assume that right because for a for a, a given fiber the mode profile does not change as from, uh, along the length of the fiber so the gamma can be assumed as a constant along the length of the fiber so the question is you know the fiber is designed to be single mode for a particular wavelength and uh, uh, and in in some ways does that hold good for the pump also Right? So, that, that, is, that is certainly uh, uh, a good question because we do know that the mode profile depends on uh, the mode field diameter depends on the wavelength, right? So, you have uh, for longer wavelength you have larger mode field diameter, okay? So, typically you do design such that 
it's single modded for both the pump as well as the signal, right? And if you are single modded for the pump, that means the signal at the signal wavelength, you are still single modded because anything longer than that, you, you are still single modded, but more energy will be in the cladding region, will be propagating in the cladding region. But at the end of the day, uh, you do have to, uh, when you are designing an amplifier like this, you are making these uh, splices at the end, ends of the fiber and the splices are with regular telecommunication grade single mode fiber, right? And uh, that fiber has a certain mode field diameter. So, you need to maintain that mode field diameter in this fiber itself. Also, right, the, the serbium silica fiber also has to be uh, mode matched with that, uh, uh, with that telecom fiber. And um, that, is a, that is a challenge uh, because if you are mode matched, then um, essentially either your pump, because the re your regular telecommunication grade fiber has a cutoff wavelength around 1200 nanometers, okay. Now, if you use the same or a similar type of fiber, you will end up having slightly multi-mode for the 980 nanometers. You have one higher order mode also possible and that might affect the pump signal overlap factor, okay. So those are all certain design considerations that you have when, when uh, uh, you, you uh, make the serbium silica fibers, but uh, yeah, that I just wanted to make you aware of this, uh, we are not designing the fiber itself at this point. Does that answer your question? So, uh, how do we, um, you know, include this uh, pump signal overlap factor? We said, okay, we are, we are actually multiplying this by gamma and so that is what is given as 0.9 in, in our uh, question. Uh, but the, so um, when we like, uh, when we look at part A, it says basically write down the expression for the small signal gain of the amplifier in terms of uh, fraction of ions in the excited state with respect to the total doping density. So what we are asked to do is to write this expression in terms of the fraction of ions, so the fraction of ions in excited state, excited state is N2, so N2 is such that N2 equals to N2 over Na, right, at wherein Na is the uh, total number of ions uh, in, the, in the fiber. So, or in other words, N2 can be written as N2 multiplied by Na and N1, what can we say about N1? So, that is going to be 1 minus N2, right? Whatever is not in the excited state has to be in the ground state, right? So, 1 minus N2 uh, multiplied by Na. I should say it is approximately because we are, this is under approximation that N3 equals to 0, right? So, um, instead of N1 and N2, I can substitute um, this expression and uh, so what you get for uh, what we considered here is uh, G is going to be given by gamma into uh, N2 Well, instead of N2, I can write as 1 minus N2 
एन ए सिग्मा ई एस माइनस नो दिस इज सॉरी This is the n two n a sigma e s minus one minus n two n a sigma a s multiplied by l, right? And the entire thing is under an uh, exponential. Okay, so I can uh, simplify this. And uh, I, I can just write this as uh, g equals exponential of gamma l capital gamma l n a sigma e s plus sigma a s multiplied by n two minus sigma a s. Right, I just uh, rearrange terms. So, so that is a little more convenient to use, right? Basically, the gain uh, it just now you know you have a certain gamma for a given fiber. The gamma is given. You know what is the length of your fiber. Um, you know what is your N A, the total uh, uh, number density of ions in the fiber, erbium ions in the fiber. And then you have your cross sections. So in this one, the only uh, variable is n two, right? So you can now calculate g for different values of n two. And especially if you want to do this in uh, dB scale, the gain in dB scale, it has got to be. Um, So it's basically ten uh, log ten of exponential of all of this. So what is that going to give you? Is basically it's going to give you ten log ten e, right? Multiplied by this factor that is in the uh, the flowery parenthesis. So ten log base ten e is what? What's the value of that? Huh? It is is a tabulated value, right? Four point three four three, right? So multiplied by this this entire factor over here. So this is going to be given by multiplied by gamma l n a sigma e s plus sigma a s n two minus sigma a s. Right. So, and uh, uh, if you, of course, want to take out the length dependence, you can express this gain per meter. Right, and then the rest of that uh, uh, stuff will remain remain as it is. Right, and this is what we have represented over here. In this plot, what we have represented is gain in dB per meter. As a function of wavelength, and as a function of this excitation level, which is n two. So, excitation level n two equal to zero, which corresponds to zero ohm power launched into the fiber. Two excitation of hundred uh, percent, where n two is equal to one. Right, so those those are the different cases that are uh, being uh, represented over here. You understand this? So for the given problem, we can actually use this graph to uh, find out certain values. Okay, so what are the values that are being asked? First of all, we are asked to um, come up with this expression. 
So that is we, we have done that we have looked at the gain expression as a function of n2 okay and then when we go back the second part is the plot below actually the plot that I showed just now shows the gain spectrum for different values of fraction of ions in the excited state right lowest curve corresponding to 0 percent and topmost corresponding to 100 percent. Determine the absorption cross section and emission cross section at the signal wavelength. So, emission and absorption cross section are not given, you are just given this, this graph by the manufacturer. Okay. Now, can you estimate the emission and absorption cross section at a particular wavelength, we have been asked to consider 1515 uh, nanometer as, as the signal wavelength. Okay. Can we get that? How do we get that? You need to essentially estimate these values given a graph of uh, g versus uh, or g, g over l uh, because gain in db per meter uh, uh, that is given as a function of n2. Yeah, any ideas? So, first of all let us substitute n2 equal to 0. Okay. If n2 equal to 0, then whatever the gain value, it represents only this factor, this factor, right. So, and everything else is known, gamma is given as 0 0.9, uh, L we do not have to worry about because G over L is what we are uh, computing, okay, and Na is given, right, and then the only unknown is sigma As, so you can find out sigma As from that. So, that just corresponds to at 1550 this point. So, at that point the gain is minus 3 dB per meter. Okay. So, I will just go back to this expression and say for n2 equal to 0 per percent the gain is given from the graph, you can read from the graph is minus 3 dB per meter and that just corresponds to um, this 4.343 multiplied by 6 into 10 power 24 and it so happens that in this uh, solution I missed out this overlap factor. So, you do have to multiply 0.9 to this multiplied by minus sigma a s right. And then from that you can actually figure out what is your sigma as. So, this, this number is slightly off. Um, so, this has to be uh, multiplied or divided by uh, 0.9 to get the final value. You understand what we did? Right? So, now that we know sigma as, now we need to find out sigma E s okay. and uh, for that we look at the case where n 2 equals to 100 percent because when n 2 equals to 100 percent, if we go back and look at this, this factor is 1. So, sigma A and sigma A these two factors will cancel and then what will be left out is sigma E s right. So, what is the corresponding gain value? I just go back, go up in this and, and say the corresponding gain value is about here for N2. So, this, this 100 percent excitation corresponds to N2 equal to 1. This is N2 equal to 0, right. So, that is roughly about a factor of 4.5. So, once again I, I equate, uh, I put it down as 4, but that should be 4.5. I equate that to this uh, uh, expression 
and from that we can find out sigma E s. So, 0 percent excitation corresponds to no pump power. So, without any pump power, right, the erbium silica fiber acts like a absorber. All the ions are in the, uh, you know, are the ground state. So, any 1550 nanometer photon that comes by will get absorbed and that is what you saw in your experiments the other day when, when you were actually doing this experiment on the EDFA when, when there was no pump power, you actually saw that the EDFA, the so called amplifier is actually providing loss, right. So, you needed to pump it to a certain level before you can recover back to the original signal level that you were sending in and then you have to pump beyond that to achieve amplification. Okay. So, the other part is about uh, assuming an average excitation along the length of the fiber as uh, uh, 60 percent right. What is the length of erbium dough fiber required for achieving a gain of 30 dB, okay. So, for that you, you go back and look at this graph. So, 60 percent excitation corresponds to this is 0, this is 10 percent, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So, this is 60 percent over here, this, this curve corresponds to 60 percent. So, at 60 percent, the corresponding gain per meter that you have is 1.5 dB per meter. Huh? Sorry, which point? So, this is basically 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Right. So, 60 corresponds to this curve over here and the corresponding point at 1550 is over here that corresponds to 1.5 dB per meter that is the gain you have. So, the question is for that gain, so gain is 1 point, what is the length required to achieve 30 dB gain? You basically say 30 dB divided by 1.5 dB per meter and so you need a length of 20 meters. So, this is typically the as, as if you are designing an erbium dope fiber amplifier, okay, this is what you have to deal with. You are given this, uh, this graph, right, gain versus uh, uh, gain per uh, unit length versus uh, wavelength and uh, then uh, based on that you are supposed to uh, figure out what is the excitation level required, uh, what is the length required to, to achieve a particular gain and all that. Okay. And this is of course, for the simple case of uniform excitation, but if you are doing this uh, for real, uh, you know there is going to be a certain pump profile depending upon the pumping configuration and based on that you will figure out what is what is the N2 and N1 at different points along the length of the fiber and based on that you will figure out the overall gain. Now, uh, a couple of points before we uh, jump uh, to, to the next topic. One is that um, you know if you if you look at the gain for an erbium dough fiber amplifier, what this tells you is that uh, you can uh, uh, achieve gain over uh, this region 1520 to about 1560 nanometer, okay, which is called the C band okay, in, in from, from an optical communication perspective. Uh, C band corresponds to the conventional band. Okay. So, you can, you can achieve amplification and one of the things you see is that the um, gain is not uniform 
across that spectrum. So, if you have communication, if you are doing communication, you have multiple wavelength channels which is carrying information, they are all coming into this amplifier and you would want to have constant gain or uniform gain across for all the wavelengths. So, what you normally have to do is to put in some loss element, spectrally dependent loss element which actually provides the provides loss such that these points the gain is actually reduced ok. So, if the if, if that gain is reduced uh, only for these wavelengths then you would have a relatively flatter uh, gain for, for all the wavelengths. So, that is a process called gain equalization ok that is typically uh, carried out in this uh, uh, in, in, in the amplifier. But the other interesting part is that when you consider this band from about uh, 1570 to about uh, 1620, you have very low gain, but you do have gain, right. And uh, that actually is what you call as an L band amplifier, it is called the long wavelength band, ok. Um, but, but when you look at the long wavelength band, it is uh, typically uh, flat, the gain spectrum is, is typically flat. So, that means you can achieve uniform amplification over a wider uh, range of uh, wavelengths, ok. So, and, and, and quite interestingly, if you think about it, if you think about what is this long wavelength band means, the long wavelength will correspond to really short transitions, ok, basically low energy transitions, right. So, this, this is basically, you know, something around 1600 nanometer, ok. So, when, when we consider a pumping scheme like this uh, or, or, or an amplifier like this, it is typically ending up as a transition, uh, the transition is ending up over here and then you have non-radiative relaxation that is taking you to the uh, ground state, ok. So, the longer, at the longer wavelengths, it is a, it is acting as if it is a four level system, ok. So, it, it may be looked upon as a quasi four level amplifier at the, at the longer wavelengths. And one of the properties of a four level system is that even for very low excitation levels you have gain and that is what you see even for very low excitation levels you have gain. The gain is not very high because the probability of those transitions is very low that the emission cross section is very low, ok. But nevertheless, because it almost acts like a four level system, you can achieve gain at relatively low levels of excitation. So, a graph like this can can teach you a lot of things you know if you if you pay a little more attention and 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 look at this 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 can you can can learn a lot about amplifiers from a graph like this and and so we have spent a lot of time looking at this graph so hopefully uh, you know that's taught you something so what we are saying is the the shorter energy transitions are likely to end up at the higher energy levels of this ground state manifold, ok. And from that you would actually have a non rated relaxation to the, to the actual valence level, ok. So, from that is similar to what you have in a four level system. So, we have not defined four distinct levels, but it actually looks like it, 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 it acts like four level systems because you are accessing only the top energy levels of your uh, ground state.
Okay. And uh, I want to actually end this with uh, one more point. Um, so, you see that around this wavelength, 14, 18 nanometer, um, so where was this? Is it here or maybe? I'm trying to look for this. Aha, uh -huh, here. So, around 14, 18 nanometers, you have a, a significant absorption cross section. Okay. So, you can essentially pump at those wavelengths also. You don't necessarily need to pump at 980 nanometers. You can pump, you can choose to pump at 1480 nanometers also because it has got a very high you know, absorption cross section. And what does that correspond to? So, instead of going all the way over here in the case of 980, what you are doing is you are doing this for 1480 nanometers. And what you see is that is okay because the emission cross section is relatively low. So, it is not a two level system. Why? Because any photon, any, any uh, atom that is pumped at 1480 nanometers will correspond to a transition from, from one of the lower energy levels of your ground state to one of the higher energy levels of the energy level E2. Okay from which you will have non radiative relaxation before you you know uh, try to achieve this gain right so so that is still a three level system okay and uh, so you you you're not likely to achieve a lot of gain at 1480 itself right because uh, that will correspond to a two level system but if you are looking for gain at longer wavelengths, uh, gain at these wavelengths uh, in, the, in the conventional band or the L band, 1480 nanometer pumping would also be useful. Okay. It is not as useful or as efficient as 980 nanometer pumping because at 980 nanometer the emission cross section is 0, virtually 0. Okay. So, you it only contributes to absorption, there is no emission, whereas at 1480, there is a finite emission cross section. So, part of the light can actually come back as 1480 itself. Okay. So, so it, it steals some of your inversion through that process and uh, because of that you won't, you do not achieve as much gain. Uh, for the same level of pumping compared to 980 nanometers. Do you see that point? Okay. So, coming back over here at 1480, 1480 at that wavelength itself the gain is very low, but you can use 1480 as the pump to achieve gain at the C band or the L band. Okay. So, you may see commercial amplifiers with 1480 nanometer pumps also. Okay, um, I see that I have run out of time, um, so we are not getting into this part, but that is okay. Uh, we can we can actually uh, take care of that in the next lecture. Mm -hmm.